micro side of things. So I, I would really like to see them uh, draft something with a clear goal. No, it must not be Fiora. Like, it doesn't have to be that. That's not the only way they can win. But then if you're not going to put them on Fiora, put them on something that has a clear goal. Like yeah. Maokai, TP flank, straight up team fights, way to engage, way to start things. Um, sure. Don't put them on something that's kind of somewhere in the middle where you know the team maybe hasn't kind of come together enough to really make it work. Well, we'll see what the plans end up being in this game. As Team Dignitas are back on the red site. We need to get counterpick at the end of phase one and counterpick at the end of phase two. TSM actually wow. still respecting of the Jace. As I huh. scroll over my notes, they did ban it in game one. TSM clearly were scared of the champion, even though it did not seem to play very well here. Yeah. And that could be a red side thing where you get to pick it and then ban away Poppy, things like this. It certainly can be. And I also do think that Jace can work, but I like Jace a lot more in combination with tank junglers. You know, give you yourselves a clear front line, a, a kind of a better go button. When you do go with something like the Kha'Zix, although it's obviously very strong in the early game, uh, it doesn't kind of have that same explosive initiation. And Someday will be put on something with a very clear goal. It's the Maokai. He's done really well in lane mm -hmm. with it in general. Even in tank versus tank matchups, carving himself out sometimes a really big CS lead. And, you know, his team fighting on is very strong. It, it gives Dignitas a very clear core from their soul lines. They can team fight. They can look for engages. It's pretty straightforward what you do here. I absolutely agree. So now we get to see if TSM wants to mirror the roles. The Nautilus or Poppy, the obvious tanks in a Maokai. We can see other options as well. If they trust Hanser to play Fiora well, you've got an easy T up for it. Cassiopeia to mirror the rise, no surprise at all. We've seen Cassiopeia all three games so far, though she has lost the two she's played. Yeah, Bjergsen has, has really been liking Cassiopeia in general this season, we've been playing it a lot uh, in his matches across different teams. And Nautilus is available. Looks like, like in a tank. That will be the pick. Okay, so Nautilus, Nautilus is really what a lot of people are kind of taking as that little notch below Maokai. Yeah. Uh, I do think that Nautilus can be very strong. Um, my one kind of concern with Nautilus is I, I do feel like he falls off late game as far as his actual like durability. Maokai has flat damage reduction from the ultimate, which really makes you so much tankier in the late game. Whereas Nautilus, really powerful in the early game, really powerful in the mid game, starts to fall off quite hard in the late game. The one caveat I will put on that is that I have really liked Nautilus a lot more with combination of things like Terran. Because when you put him with that, it kind of makes up for the fact that he doesn't have as much tankiness. Be, like kind of shores up that weakness, and he still has his explosive engage. He still has incredible CC, so uh, we'll see if they do decide to do anything like that. So what's weird to me is Team Nukentas actually immediately grab the Rek'Sai, which was the jungler they picked and after Andrew. the 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 TSM bans came through, or that they you know got forced down to Rek'Sai. They want to go for it anyway, but they also have the option of of grabbing a, a high profile support like the Zyra or the Malzahar and banning away the counters, or taking Lee Sin, or right, taking, sure. Like, there's a lot of picks here that are. are Pretty big ticket, but yeah. they're comfortable, obviously, matching roles here. And just, it just is strange to me, because I feel like the jungle pool is so vast right now, and you could have created yourself an uncounterable support pick. They didn't go for it. Strange to me, but we'll see what it ends up being. Two tank supports banned by Team Dignitas, the Thresh and the Tarek both off the table. Malzahar and will it be Zyra, the final ban here for TSM. Zyra already has been taken Oh, you're right, table, sorry. So It'll be interesting to see if it is even more uh, of those bans. I definitely think that um, I, I like the Tarek ban. It makes a lot of sense. Obviously, that is kind of prompting the response of the Malzahar ban because Dignitas has first pick out of the second ban base. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what they want to go here. They can obviously take their first pick of those 80 carries. And this time, it's, it's looking like it may be Ash, which would be a change up from the previous games. Right. They had taken Varus first. Uh, TSM had taken. Uh, Jin in the first game as their kind of high priority of the AD carries. So this would give us one of each of the triumvirate in right. each of the games, and very interesting. Uh, Laud, two straight Ash games now. Jin in the first. Wildcutter going to maybe reprise his role on the Varus. Did, I think, the most damage in the game in the champion. Poke, of course, mm. makes it look that way, but still 20,000 damage is 20,000 damage. It's not anything to shake a stick at. See, time's gonna tick down, and they say, I'm gonna go ahead with Yaf. They're gonna just mirror the champion here. Yeah, I, I would the same agree. bot lane as they did last game. The only There's kind of collection point left, really, is if Dignitox has any sort of interesting support pick that they can do reactively to whatever Biofrost selects here, since they have saved their support as that last choice. We have seen throughout the draft phase, uh, 
really an all pro play. It's kind of evolving a lot more, and it had traditionally been leaving solo laners for those last picks to try to get the lane kind of counters. But as teams are doing it more and more, they seem to be more happy to pick their solo laners in the first round and avoid kind of getting banned out in that second round. So tank support once again, TSM back to back to back. Bot laner picks Tarek, Thresh, then Braum. I guess if your TSM tank supports are not dead, you want to play that style. Two tanks in the lineup, an assassin, and then two strong backliners and Team Ding the Toss. Six special could go for the old school lick with Morgana. And Morgana had terrorized TSM's bot lane last weekend in their matchup against Ole and the rest of Immortals. And Expecial going to reprise that role. Interesting to see. I, I like it a lot. You can use the Black Shield in a number of ways that are extremely effective against TSM. The last passive hit uh, from Braum, as that's about to proc, you can Black Shield. Avoid that stun. Uh, it's going to immune the knockup from the ultimate from Braum. Very choreographed or telegraphed, rather, ultimates from Nautilus. And even from Cassiopeia, if you're really on point, these are sure. things that you can kind of block out. So there's a lot of big ticket spells that can be stopped by that Black Shield. And they should have an edge in lane against that melee supports. But melee supports for all the kind of crap they get, they have been showing up pretty well in the NALCS. Smoothie has been doing very well with them. Uh, Biofrost has been picking Thresh. He picked in his last series, picked again here. Now he's drawing bans on melee supports, double bans on melee supports. Yep. The priority seems to be rising as people are not taking tanks as frequently in the jungle. Mm -hmm. You know, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, these are kind of, Kha'Zix is not a tank at all, and Lee Sin is kind of like a pseudo tank, right? So you have another tanky person coming from the bot lane and can help to shore out your team pump. Yep, and it seems like with Malzahar and Zyra off the table, it's just easier to play the matchup. So we are getting ready to jump into our final game of the night, the third and final showdown between TSM and Team Dignitas. Dignitas, maybe the hottest new team in the league, looks pretty sharp, but They've got to figure out if this is going to work for them. Now a top laner, a team fighter, a tank in for someday. Once again, the Maokai. TSM going to, of course, match that with the Nautilus top lane themselves. And the Braum, the tank once again here for Biofrost in the support role. And as we load ourselves into the game, we get to figure out who it's going to be. Improving to two and one. Improving and staying near the top of the standings at the end of Friday's games. Here we go. Game three, TSM versus Team Ding the Toss hits the rift. Both teams, two tanks, or at least kind of pseudo tanks, if you don't want to count the Braum support as a full tank. But uh, Varus, Wild Turtle, going to be starting with Longsword once again. So maybe this is the new standard. This may be the kind of development that we are going to find in the meta, as it has been both teams running it so far. And yep. It can be one of those things where one kind of block of scrims is really doing this strategy, and they're picking up and accepting it as the best. But mm -hmm. different teams do not always scrim each other. A lot of these teams scrim the same group week in, week out. They're not always playing against every team in the LCS. Yeah. I know uh, there was a while back in end of spring, I want to say last year, where Cole start on AD Carry was really popular. And yep. it was, I want to say it was like Alltech or Wild Turtle, who just decided to start going Cole at the beginning of every game. And then suddenly everyone started doing it because it was working. They won like five games in a row. So just everyone went Cole for a week and then they just stopped. <laughs> and it was just like, all right, well, that was fun. But yeah, never mind. And those, those meta shifts can feel very abrupt to the pro play viewer, right? Mm -hmm. But there was like 500 scrims in between when it started <laughs> and where it stopped that we didn't get to see. Yeah. And it was probably established, oh, okay, actually it doesn't really work because you can get ganked to see their yeah. die or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that is a, a lot of the stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes. And, yep. and there can be kind of different metas even within the NLCS based on who you're scrimming against, yeah. right? You know, there was a recent interview players from P1 were talking about how you know, TSM and, and Liquid and C9 kind of only like to scrim against each other. And, and that can lead to a situation where you have those guys with their own idea of what's the best way to play the games based on their results. And then you can have another group of teams who have their own idea of what the best way to play the game is based on their scrim results. Yeah, it's usually very pronounced coming into playoffs, especially because they start scoring off on opposite sides of the bracket. Usually a patch hits, sometimes a small one, sometimes a big one, right before playoffs, and it's like, ooh, just kidding, it's TP Heal Mundo is the best top laner in the game, and half the teams are playing it, and they're on opposite sides of the bracket because they were scrimming together, and that was the best top laner. Yep. And people can definitely get very tight lip around playoff time mm -hmm. with strategies. So, Dignitas going to be shoving in their opponents here, looking to kind of try to poke them out, deny as much CS as they can under turret, and kind of get their advantage that way. Uh, we have seen a turtle get poked out in earlier games. 
forcing out those pots very early and uh, have to track how he's doing in that regard this time. This chaser may be looking for an early gank mid lane. You can find the play. Not going to get spotted. Now gets seen, actually, and Bjergsen can tell he's there. Sven is over the wall, too, and he's low. Looking for the play onto this. Kha'Zix has to leap away from his own jungle. Chaser getting a good side of that trade. Sven with the defensive trinket knows what's going on, though, and he's going to get actually control over the Raptors anyway, so no real harm or foul. Nice bind and a Biofrost. Eight gold for his troubles. Yeah, not too much damage coming out from that. It's mostly about holding them in position for your AD carry to get a lot of that damage out in the early game. Whoa, special, what Whoa. was that? He walked forward for no reason. He's got no though. black shield. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, gets the binding. It was a bait the whole time. Look at the damage on a wild turtle. But that is, you do not want to trade into that. Lot actually, I think, lost that trade, funny enough, because there was so many range minions yeah. uh, that had stacked up. There was like six or seven minions turned to shoot him when he got his auto attack on turtle. So it's something you really have to track. Uh, Lot now does not have his potion. He does have the Doran's Blade for that sustain. Um, but he has used his one potion, and turtle still has two more minions. Snipe on Dubik special. Yeah. See, he points at Lod and goes, just kidding, we're going to hit the mark on after all. Biofrost puts up the shield into last hit of minion, takes a couple hundred damage. Not the cleanest situation. Now Chaser wants to get into the mix. There is no ward here, so we'll see how heavily they want to actually commit to this, but it's just going to be a ward. Try to keep them safe. Yep. Uh, from the Kha'Zix, Svenskeren already had base and is heading down to bot side, so we'll see if that does come into play. Yeah, Svenskeren just pinged his own Krugs. I don't know if it was like, hey, Rek'Sai might be here, or I'm just going to be on this camp. But it seems that Rek'Sai has not touched anything. This is actually really cute here, too. A little move. But so, the Tri -Ward was already, Tribush was already warded by Jason. Expecial then walks over there to say that he's warding it, doesn't use his ward, and now their opponents don't really know that Chaser was down there on the map, right? They, that's Nothing is given away there. They know, okay, hey, it's warded, we can't go here. But they don't know that Chaser was there. The ward is still available for special, so that's something that they may not be able to actually track. Right, because normally they'd see if someone trinketed later on, yep. you know, if special walks over and wards it, but that doesn't quite matter now. Well, Sven Skaren going to make his trip to the top side, revealed by a trinket, though. So Team Nugatas knows Sven is in bottom river. You're able to clear away the control ward. No big problem here, and he's replaced by a trinket. That's actually out of the brush, though. It didn't turn invisible right away, so it actually won't see in the brush. If someone hides in there, they won't know. Oh, Milefrost! <laughs> Shields the wrong way. Always looks funny, but not the end of the world. Losing his last potion here. Haunts are early. Roan to mid lane. Keen. Keen is going to flash. No, the flash oh, auto nice. attack. A couple more goes in. There's the hook in as well. And he can't run away. First blood picked up. Beautifully executed. And now someday going to be joining the fight. But why even bother? Probably should have canceled TP. Losing a lot of health for that. Definitely should have canceled TP. And that was so well played by Haunter. Keen wanted to reactively flash the hook. So Haunter flashes in. Immediate auto for the root. Has the hook for the follow up. Miasma to follow that. Just so well coordinated. This is a beautiful roam here early on from Hauntzer. And, and there it goes. Keen getting ready for that hook. Flash in. Auto root. Flashes out. Easy hook now. No way to dodge it. Keen goes down. First blood to Bjergsen. And someday, Don't way know why too late on that up. TP to, for that to matter. Now, Hauntzer can even look for the repeat, right? He doesn't have TP to match. Hauntzer six. You can put a deep ward down bot and look for that sort of a TP as, as the first ultimate from Nautilus is exceptionally powerful. Looking for the play right here onto Wild Turtle and Biofrost. There's they a flash, the fight, it's a minion, it's special! Oh, that is a catastrophe! Oof. Uh, it's good for TSM that he didn't miss that because Hauntzer actually was TPing top lane right at the same time there. So it does expend his TP. And Vitas not able to get anything back just yet. All right, just a seven minion lead. Turtle, yeah. You're really not allowed to recall there. <laughs> Maybe it was a bait the whole time. I don't know. Lot, of course, pretty low himself. Has oh, it's the repeat. Uh-oh. This is so smart. They know that Keen is, is summonerless. They're going to wrap around here. Almost no way to get out unless he can land this ultimate. Oh, oh no, beautiful stun. stun. Goodbye. He's dead. Sven Skarn gets the kill credit. Absolutely perfect. Bjergsen lands the stun. Not even a problem. <sighs> nice. So well done by TSM. And it's funny to say that ganking for Bjergsen is a mix-up, but in, in, the, in the course of the series, it actually is. They've yeah. been focusing top lane very heavily, and as Keen finally you know, has some confidence to play a little bit more aggressively in, in this third and final game, TSM goes right back to the tried and true. Ganking for this mid lane, and beautiful ultimate there from Bjergsen. Needed to nail the stun to cancel the alt. 
is able to do so. Sven gets low on the exit, but not going to go down. Special just fighting for wave control right now. Biofrost can't push it all the way in. He doesn't want it to freeze, but it will anyway, which is going to deny quite a bit of farm off of Wild Turtle. It was kind of an incomplete push. Yeah. It's not going to be a full freeze, at least, because it's right by their turret, so the minion wave joins it'll up eventually quickly, push and out. it will push back. Um, but definitely, yeah, Biofrost would have loved to fully reset that and deny some of this wave. And eventually, they will be able to push it in. This is weird. It's it's desynced bottom lane showing right now. See, Biofrost already recalled. He's got a sight, so he can stay in lane. Especially on a very late recall, leaves this Ash alone for a very long time. Yeah, he certainly does, and there is that vulnerability. But the trade-off, obviously, being Vlad gets some more CS. In this scenario, though, TSM makes a great call. They react. They know Special had a late base. He cannot possibly be there for the Infernal, so they make the call, knowing they will have the odd numbers in a fight, and get a free Infernal. Really easy, really clean pickup. They just have looked like a different team in the yeah. last two games. TSM has been doing everything right in the last two games. Definitely agree. So they're looking so, so much better. 900 gold in the lead, two kills up. All this is wonderful now for TSM fans. They finally got a team who's playing nothing like they have earlier in this LCS split. I mean, mid lane is, is really a problem. When you look yeah. at the farm, you look at the kills, you look at the summoner advantage, this can just keep happening to Keen. He's not playing with cleanse. He's playing ghosts. He gets caught by anything. He's just going to die, and they can keep looking to make these roams and really get mid lane out of control. And we've seen Bjergsen carry games so many times. He's been given the perfect position to carry from. Absolutely agree. Unless someday can keep Hauntzer pinned down and Chaser can find a way to pin out Sven Skarin. I mean, right now, Chaser does have a level lead over his opposite member in the jungle. Theoretically, Chaser could try to control this Rek'Sai. Or uh, control this Kha'Zix, rather. We'll see. Both blue buffs handed off almost the exact same time. Bjergsen walking back in the lane at 8. Yeah, Chaser, ben finally level 7 for himself. I mean, Chaser went for Tiamat early on. He's going to be able to power farm. He's not monogated whatsoever. You know, Sven is going to run out of mana. It slows him down. He's going for a warrior. It's kind of more about the burst than the AoE speed clear. Uh, but obviously, you know, TSM has been making those trade-offs, getting kills elsewhere. And oh, that's so cute. That sapling right there. Watches for the sapling play. Oh, they're going for it anyway, though. He has Chaser a head start. Coming. Flash. Ooh, tried to predict the hook, but someday makes sure to flash still toward the wall. And flash for not required flash, I suppose, but it still means pressure of the top lane. TSM swap the lanes. They're going to rush for this turret, and well, they're out of minions right now. They've got to buy a few more seconds. Yeah, it should be okay. First turret of the game. Once again, a TSM, and I believe that's all three in a row they've gotten this. This is like a lane swap move. You don't really see those bot lane rotations to top before a turret goes down that often. And, and I, I really like that play, the mix up from TSM. And they're going to keep pushing because Dignitas' bot lane has not based. We used to just play a lot in, in summer LCS playoffs, right when the change came out. Yep. You had teams like CLG at six minutes every game. Everyone go top lane, knock the turret down ASAP, rush for the first turret gold. And there were strategies aimed at just acquiring that money. Vlad will be given solo gold in the bot lane outer turret, but it won't be that same influx of free gold from getting the first one. But he's going to die as many minutes as he can. And this finally, this turret will fall. He also significant CS advantage for him, so they're going to be playing a lot around Vlad, trying to funnel him that gold, see how strong this guy can be. And we do know that you know, there's the opportunity on Ash to really kind of turn around some of these plays, to look yep. for some picks. But Bjergsen is taking the more kind of conservative summer spell. He's playing cleanse while Keen is not, and Keen has already been punished for that. So the case. In team fights, you'd think Black Shield will be enough, but it was 3v1 with no more ground to be seen. I do want to point out the fact that Team Dignitas, I think, are playing this early game pretty well. Despite being down to first turret gold and two kills, the gold difference is only 600. So yep. farm-wise, and that's a lot of it being Chaser and a lot of it being Lod right here. Of course, uh, propped up by the turret gold, granted. Yeah, top lane heavily winning in CS, bot lane heavily winning in CS. You know, they are up in CS in, in the jungle. So it's, it's trade-offs, right? Who is going to make the most of, of their advantages? Is it going to be you know, TSM? funneling all of this into Bjergsen. Can they continue to snowball this game and look around? Ooh. Nice. Wow, that landed. Flash gonna hook, gonna land the knockup as well. Chaser here, but it's a turtle turtle three versus though. four. Biofrost gonna lose his life, just maybe. The final shot comes through, and Chaser flashes to safety. One for zero, turtle dangerously low. Chaser gotta run away from this one. Still advantage Team Dignitas. They survive out of the turret. Yeah, Turtle nails that ultimate, but Biofrost did not have turret aggro, so Turtle had to back up. Couldn't actually get a lot of damage out during that CC chain. And as a result, it's Biofrost going down, and Dignitas come out positive on that play, keeping it very, very close.
And a lot of resources and effort used to try to make that play happen. Now, Someday has a nice big wave to catch in the top lane to get farther ahead in golden XP. Here's going to clear out the mid lane, but looks like someone can't answer that soon if Chaser walks over. TSM trying to be a bit more aggressive. That one did get turned around. Certainly did. I like the proactive plays, though. I like the confidence to be able to do that. You need to be able to go for these plays. And Dignitas, they were up to the challenge this time. They answered it very well. So here it is once again. Turtle actually is the one with the turret aggro. So you'll see he has to back out. Isn't able to get a lot of damage out during this time. And Keen, so fast on the roam. Maokai coming in from behind. They were lucky to not lose more here as Turtle was exceptionally close to going down. I think someday could have taken him down with the ultimate pop and then backed off. But yep. didn't want to risk trading his life for it. And makes the conservative call. Yep. Dignitas answer the play very, very well. Yeah, defensible choice by someday. Just You're right, could have been a kill if he chose the riskier one. But we're back on equal gold now. That one kill and the minion waves being equaled means TSM. All they have to show for themselves is this Infernal Drake lead. Nothing to completely ignore, but not the early game they had last game for sure. And Team Nigatos have a plan. They don't have this hope you win landing phase Jace pick. They've got solid team fighting. They've got a 30 minion lead Ash, Lod building for full damage. They've got the tools they need to win this game. They definitely do. And they also have great initiation for their front line through the Rise Ultimate. When you get extra ranks in this Rise Ultimate, you can use that as a flank. You can drop the Rise Ultimate, have Chaser, have Someday hop into this. As Lod's firing in the arrow, Special is firing in bindings, and you can really kind of clamp down on a team and try to take out the carries. See how good the clamps are. See if they can knock them down. Lod's still going to clear the waves. You've got, of course, the lane stops have come through. This is the standard pro level mid game, and to be honest, any of you guys playing at home, it is worth trying to get these lane assignments yourselves as well. Send the dual lane to the mid lane, let the support roam easily, and Hope your mid laners have ways of side laning. This is a big dragon here. TSM would love to snowball the game. Take their second one. Haunter, late to the party, though. Can't Not going to get it. Not going to get it. Early smite doesn't matter, though. Black Shield makes it all fine. They walk away from the, yeah. the Winter's Bite. TSM, though, first in the mid lane. Drake for tempo is not always the best play. This turret could drop. Lod maybe find an arrow, looks for it, hits on the Haunter. The tank is going to survive. Binding not going to be in range. Anchor's going to miss. The ulti just going to slow down someday. But that was Drake for Tempo, and that Tempo turned into a, a mid lane tier outer turret. Now, TSM makes the right call to not go for the Dragon after Haunter was late. He didn't have his TP, was too slow to get down there. They would have loved to try to snowball the game off of that, though. But Dignitas makes a good call, takes the Dragon, and TSM is going to be able to trade back with the best that they can, and that's that mid lane turret. So, really, right back to the kind of beginnings of last game where the two teams were trading back and forth really well, trying to take advantage of any opportunity that they are given. Let's see what they can get for this one. 800 gold lead TSM. Tools to work with. Yomu's Ghost Blade done on Wild Turtle. Tier still stacking. It's going to be a while, to be fair. Three tiers total in this game to stack up. I actually quite like the fact that they have the, the Varus, the Spellcaster Varus paired with a Cassiopeia. Yeah. Because Cassiopeia really does kind of take the place of that AD carry with the consistent damage. You know, a lot of times you're looking at compositions with Spellcaster Varus against the Maokai, and you're like, how do you actually kill the Maokai? Yeah. Well, in this case, there's a clear answer, and it's Bjergsen. When he gets to his spell penetration, he is going to be able to pump out that damage and deal with something. Absolutely. We'll see if we can make that happen here. As they keep playing the wave clear game, and this turtle able to spam abilities constantly. Law doing a good job of dodging away from the poke. You notice know, Special is playing towards the back. He has, no, he has no offensive plays to make. There's no reason to be in range of an arrow or anything. Let's just save the black shield for Lod. Give him only one target. I can shield it, no problem. And especially playing that little microcosm of the matchup appropriately. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of how you kind of play Tom Kench support. Right. You don't want to be the guy who gets CC'd. You want to protect the guy who's going to get CC'd. And TP coming in from Sunday. Dignitas looking for a play. Looking to flank Bjergsen, maybe. Spread out. Scaring. Sunday walks through a ward, says, Hello, Sven. You went this way, but I want to find you. Stealth and a jump, and here comes the flash. Oh, the flash going to land. Finding. Nowhere is Sven to go. Kill picked up. Bjergsen running and gets away with it. But the TP turns into a kill, turns into map control. It's just one kill, though, and Haunter is pushing on the top side. Nice TP play from Sunday. We'll see if TSM can equalize. So far, though, good play. It cost a couple summoners. Yeah, uh, it's going to cost one wave of XP and gold as well, so it slightly diminishes the value of that kill. The question just becomes, it's worth it right now. It's a good play for Dignitas right now. Can Hotzer get something better with his TP? If he can't, then well played by Dignitas. 
That very nearly could have been a kill in a Biofrost. I don't know if Law didn't have his ulti up or if the Trinket Ward weren't down at that time, but Biofrost <laughs> nearly got caught out. A special almost canceled him with the Tormented Soil. But TP advantage is the name of the game now for Hanser. Can he find that teleport flank? Again, thankfully for Team Dignitas, Black Shield is really good at stopping Nautilus tricks. It certainly is. But only on one person. Yeah, and, and that's a lot of what it comes down to when you're playing against Morgana. And you kind of fake like you want to initiate on one person, bait out that Black Shield, and then go for someone else, you know? Someday can run in, hook towards one person, Black Shield goes there, ultimates the second target. And that is your true kill target. It's similar to how Threshes have to play that matchup. You know, flash on one person, flay them, they get the sh Black Shield, then you try to hook the other guy, that kind of thing. So, uh, gonna have to track how these two teams play around it. So far, someday, having Hauntzer pinned down on the top lane, he's really gonna be looking to track Hauntzer, not allow him to kind of get a good TP play off. And yeah. I want to also talk about uh, the way one interaction is going to work, which is Varus ultimate against Black Shield. It, you would kind of think in your head that the Varus ult spreads from the target, and if they have Black Shield, of course, they're not rooted. Well, that radius doesn't change. It doesn't The radius of, of spreading to other champions does not move with the with the target. It, that ring stays in the ground regardless, no matter what. So if you Black Shield someone who gets Varus ult and they walk away, they're not dragging the chains with them to the rest of the teammates. You're not making their retreat suddenly horrible. So. It's actually a pretty Morgana positive interaction that you can just have them, just everyone can walk backwards and nothing even happens. Yeah, so we'll see if Special is giving up the pass. Get some quick ones on that. Ben Scaren on the side, TSM looking for a play, but someday he is coming down to support his mid laner. And that's going to be a TP list someday, of course, as well. Hauntzer can mirror that play, and this is kind of how you have to play TP list top laners sometimes. You've got to predict where the play might be. He has 20 seconds to play with. You know, he shoved the top lane wave in already. He has to get back top lane eventually. But yep. in the meantime, make sure you're in the right place in case something does happen. And now Hansu says, I don't have ward control anymore. It's entirely dark in this northern jungle. There's literally zero TSM wards up there. Hansu feels safe enough to get one more wave, but he can't get much more as someday will return to that spot. And he gets a shove to the turret, and that's kind of the key thing there for him. So no freeze is able to be set up, nothing like that. Uh, the wave will always bounce back to him. And so far, Dignitas has done a good job not exposing themselves, not offering up that TP play. And there's only about 20% less on, left on that cooldown for someday. Dignitas has made it through the woods for the most part. We'll see if Hauntzer can kind of capitalize on these closing seconds where he does have his TP advantage. 50 seconds, so 21 minutes in, just a couple of seconds, that TP is going to be back. I really like the point out from you too about how somebody is playing it. You can see him roaming towards mid lane. Ooh, where could he TP? Maybe there. I'll walk down, walk right back up in time to catch him anyway. You don't lose anything from making those moves because he's always getting to the place he needs to be to collect the mini wave as well. So this is a small thing, but if a play gets called, he's going to be there. And you can see the way the rest of the team is playing. Look how far back they are. Every single one of them on their side of the map. No one's even in sight range of the river, but that means that TSM gets ward control. They get to set up around this mountain drake. They've already got their own wards down. Team Bigotas have no vision, that ward notwithstanding, granted. But there's no one in range to stop this. So, you know, some of the defensive plays that were required via that TP play, under perfect play, just manifests in TSM retaining ward control and getting a drake for it. And that's something that you can kind of link way back to that TP play. This is part of the cost almost um, that has been expended. But someday has his TP back up. Can be looking to make some of those plays. Once again, he has been spectacular with his TPs really shining on the tank as well as the Fiora. Yeah, typically. Quick knockdown in the cannon. Mini 50 gold for Biofrost. Richest support in the game, I would guess. I don't know, right. man. Mor Morgana, Morgana gets 500 gold, gold up. Is he? Okay. Yeah, 500 gold up, even despite the death and the assist. Just Because yeah. Special has had to play pretty defensively, and Biofrost yeah, has been pretty fair. on point getting relic stacks. I, the Watcher, sometimes can net so much gold from Morgana yeah. if you're able to actually just kind of consistently proc that out. Yep. But Biofrost almost doubled what he's earned with just the tier one gold item. That's very impressive. Yep. If you were Thresh, it'd be way harder. Last leading's just much more difficult in that champ, but. Yeah, and any range support, you're sure. obviously going to have to exactly nail that last hit with the Targons. You don't get uh, the execute that a melee champion would. Wild Turtle again going Edge of Night after his Yomu's Ghost Blade. I'm still going for the Lethality build. I actually want to check. Turtle does not have any other lethality in runes. Some players would choose to do so, not him. That's fine. 
Look at that Q. So the flash follow gonna find a wild turtle. Engage fight is here. Biofrost going for the knockup. Dodged by a lot. Black shield on anyway. Biofrost running, running away. Arrow's already been used. Expatial dangerously low, but the kill still comes through on Biofrost. Someday clearly much tank here as a top laner. Yeah, someday able to nail that. But now comes Haunter. Can they turn oh, around? Blood gets caught. Not a lot. He's got no way out of this one. Not gonna land. Also gonna look for Keith, but Black Shield, timely by Expatial. It was a trade of a bot laner for a support. Ends up being positive for TSM. Good Black Shield, but really nice ult from Haunter. So he knew that Lod would get hit by the ultimate passing through him to go to Keen. So he ults the back target. A little bit of a mastery play there from, from the Nautilus. Always smart to try to maximize how many people he can hit with that stun. Absolutely, and TSM once again retaining map control. And the thing is, these mini waves have already been on Team Dignitas' side, so it's real easy to shove into the turret and just retain all the vision the way you want it. Chaser can't see Bjergsen to knock him up or stop the recall, so it's going to be the reset for TSM. Yeah, someday looking to make plays once again, gets in on the Turtle with Biofrost, able to block up the Ash Arrow and the Morgana Binding, keeping Turtle alive, and Dignitas going for that chase down. They do eventually pick up Biofrost, but because of his good play, the rest of his team does stay alive, and now Haunter flanking in, catches Lod. You'll see he ults through, knowing it's going to hit both, knocks him up, Lod goes down, he will get out, but yeah. And that was actually a big misplay by Lod. One, he he stayed to kill the minion wave. He's like, all right, it's 5v4, we're good, we got this game. And it's like, well, but Hanser is coming to flank you. And he lost a lot of time. And then he also flashed when he was guaranteed to die. He flashed, like, basically during his death as Hanser ganked him. So, yeah. some missteps by Lod. He could have saved a bit more of himself. But, again, one for one, TSM controlling the advantage, 1500 up. You can Sometimes see how much damage Sven can deal. It's a big deal, though, because yeah. if you do have Ash without that flash for the next team fight, you can get picked on, especially a lot easier by Sven's Garen on the Kha'Zix, who's going to be looking uh, for those deletions. And they're going to have to play around it once again. It's kind of like playing around their TP disadvantage. They have to play around the fact that their AD is down a flash a little bit. Oh, Turtle gets caught. A lot of damage. Flash, knockup, but there's no follow, and the damage isn't there for Chaser. No one else wanted to do the damage because the rest of the team was coming in. Lod cutting back, trying to stay alive. Here comes Sven for a bit more. Flash to follow. It's a special down. Chaser going to drop as well. Kill goes to Biofrost. Bit of revenge on that one, and someday not long for this world either. Quick kill pick up. He gets Three for zero, dude. TSM. A great hook on Nakeen. Make it four for zero. Beautifully done by TSM. And that should be the bear, and this isn't even the worst of it. TSM, four kills for zero. Decimate the fight. We'll go straight to Baron. And almost no chance to take that as started like a pick for, yep. for Dig, but got turned around on them so hard. And look at that, the fact they couldn't get the kill. TSM now allocating the resources. Bjerg's gonna take down mid lane tier two. They don't need him to kill off the Baron. An easy pickup here for Sven. Heals himself up with the void spikes, and down it goes Baron, and a 6,000 gold lead for TSM. Really big for TSM as they have looked good these last two games. Dignitas trying to make plays, trying to get those picks, but it is turned around on them, and here is how it started out. With ultimate there from Turtle, Lod nails his, but Haunter zoning out the carries. And especially shielded himself on accident, yeah. I think. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, Lod is just getting pushed out of the fight, and Biofrost is protecting his carry. Chaser is isolated, he gets taken down. There's no threat from the back line, Lod is way too low. So someday is just gonna have to sacrifice his life. Then Keen, hanging around way too long. He's gonna get hooked in by Haunter, a good grab by him. That's them another kill. And really, that was some great team fighting from Haunter. A lot of credit deserved by him to zone the carries and trust your back line to survive against the tank Rek'Sai. Yeah, the fact that Law's getting zoned out so easily despite having a black shield on your team, like that's a really free chase in to kill the Varus off. But being flashless, being afraid of Bjergsen roaming back in, he runs away, special black shield's the wrong target. And, you know, all the health bars went down at that point. So it's TSM definitely executing much more cleanly, looking to ride this game home. And it's sub 30 minutes. They've got a sizable lead pretty early on. And they can even look to, to utilize their TP as Haunter has TP advantage. He's shoving in bot side, but they could try to set up the TP play top side if they want to go for that. You know, anytime Haunter backs off, Dignitas' top lane has to be very careful. They have to watch out for these TP flanks because somebody can't match. Definitely cannot. You got to watch out for that. Baron buffs on all the members of TSM makes it pretty easy to keep the push going. They split up pretty sizably. Duo lane heads to the top side. That's going to be an easily taken turret. I don't believe there's an answer available. No, certainly not. Yeah, Sven's here. That's done for. Lead expands. TSM can look for a little bit more. All the tier two turrets gone except for the bot lane. And that's not going to be 
much longer either. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think that one's going to be going down next. As, as Someday has backed off. I think at this point he knows he needs to group up with a team and try to make a play, try to get a pick. They need to hit someone with the Ash Arrow, the Bindings, and take someone out. Because otherwise, uh, it's looking grim. Wild Arrow hits Biofrost. Don't know why he even looked for it there. Bio just catches both. Good job yeah. by him. Disengaged regardless. There we go. Bot lane tier two going to fall. And if you're trying to pull the trigger off, Haunter being bot lane, they needed someday close to the lineup there. Starting to see some cracks in the team to toss armor. Oh no, he gave away local gold. Haunter, not greedy apparently, wants to join the mid lane. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Move over. That's the only way that something can really go bad there. Haunter was jumped onto by someday, but not much threat of uh, damage there. Wants to stick around the team. Knows that really for Dignitas, it's a desperation engage or it's backing off here. They don't have their pick tools. That turret has one hit on it. I think Dignitas will just back off. There we go. Taken down by the minions themselves. Not even champions. I'm sorry to knock look. that one out. Hook's going to land on a someday. Can be quickly killed. The stun's there. The ulti's pop has to flash out of the team fight. Bromol tags just the tree trying to knock him up. Black Shield lets him walk away. That's still mid lane inhibitor taken out. TSM furthering the and control. Look at top lane. They prepped the wave. It's right there at the turret. TSM makes the easy rotation. Baron buff of the minions working on this turret as well. They're going to get it. No problem. Some may heal back up. Ulti's still on cooldown. They've caught up the chaser. The engage comes in. Keen's blocked right away. Chase is going to be next for that one. Two for zero. Special for the third. Look at the damage up. But they've got a lot forced away. Bjergsen actually kills him with the poison. Four for zero. And someday is going to go down next. The clean ace. Five for nothing. TSM went from three to three in kills to 12 and three. The Baron, the entire base, the series itself. And TSM will improve to two and one. Crushing Team Dignitas under their heels saying, how dare you power rank them above us? DSM, trajectory upwards. Definitely a strong upward trajectory for TSM. They look great. They make the last two games look easy, severely outclassing Dignitas in games two and three, and they have got to feel good about this one. And Hauntzer biases our stats. Rabidon's death cap, 100% win rate on Nautilus as he recalled back, sold the items, and bought new ones and TP'd into the fray. Of course, he was a tank this game, but the post-game stats will lie to you. Either way, Bronda. TSM definitely can feel very, very good about this win. Yeah. They found the, the road they needed to take. You could tell. They're they're excited about it. That was like a lot of kind of stylish, you know, like yeah. selling the items, TV back in, flash, mm -hmm. queuing backwards. They were having some fun with it. Yeah. Definitely a big win for TSM, momentum-wise and standings-wise, you know? Oh, they yeah. lost to C9 now, but they are 2-1. C9 and even Phoenix One as top half standings teams potentially yeah. in the last one. They really have. And, yeah. and, I, and I think that we have seen some of their holes kind of begin to show a little bit in, in this series. You know, game two, they really did look lost. Game three, it's it simply felt like they were outclassed. You know, the last yeah. two games um, didn't feel like they were really matching up well against TSM. And I, I think that uh, in this game three, they had a plan. But TSM was just equal to it, right? Yeah. They were always able to match the TPs, to match the plays, and to get more out of almost all of those trades. Absolutely agree. TSM playing better as the team, and it just took them a game to warm up, it felt like. The first one, they got pushed around, and they had to win by making team plays, mm -hmm. and they failed to do so. Just, yep. they, they needed the five-on-fives, but they couldn't find the flanks. It never came together, and they got split pushed to death, and the, that desperation team fight came in too late. Game two was like, a walk in the park. It's like, you outscale for free. Just don't screw up in the game. It will fall into your hands if you don't fall too far behind. And they received their free win. Third game, on them to play well. Team fight comp versus team fight comp. 
and they massively outplayed Team Dignitas. Definitely, and you could even see the adaptations, you know, from Hanser. You know, was maybe a bit hesitant to make some of those plays in the first game, maybe TPing a bit too late, maybe not looking for those plays. Or you no, know, it's not just on him; it's all on the whole team. But still, game two, game three, making the roams early and often. Uh, really helping to snowball the game, and, and he looked incredible in the series. He absolutely did. Hanser looked great. Bjergsen had some really solid plays as well. I loved all the mid lane pressure, the the early like level five Nautilus roam turn into first blood. They repeated it under the turret, two for zero. Sounds pretty good. Mid lane never really let up, and Bjergsen did plenty of damage that game. So a good match win for TSM. Beautifully done. Now let's send it down to TSM and Riv on the side stage. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by TSM Hauntzer after their victory over Dignitas back in the NALCS. Now, I got to ask you guys back as well. It seems like things are gelling a little bit more. Coming into the second week, how are you feeling about your gameplay in the top, Hauntzer? How are things going? So, in the first week, I definitely played like shit. I, I think I just underperformed really hard. And, um, like, as a team, we just weren't up to par. I, like individually and as a like team as a whole, but uh, now coming into week two, I like know what problems I need to solve. We're all like working hard to like solve our issues, and I think we're feeling a lot more confident. Has it been interesting without Doublelift on the team, where the obligations have to go after that? Maybe an, another voice from Bio on the bottom. Has that been uh, tough for the team? It's definitely been a struggle because um, Peter was like super decisive, and he basically like always force plays around him. So like the team had to like take care of him. But now that uh, we have Turtle, it was just, we like kind of don't have as much direction as we yeah. used to. So we're just like looking to find that groove back. And last time I got to speak to you was at finals in Canada. And I kind of spoke to you about wanting to be the top NA, top laner for NALCS. How is that working out now? You have Flame to go against, Someday to go against. Obviously you're still fighting for that position, but how is the competition up there this season? Um, it's really hard to tell because it's like really early in the season and I um, haven't played that many opponents yet, but the definitely the top playing pool has gotten a lot better and it's like going to be a lot more competitive than it was last year. Well, doing better. Undefeated on Nautilus, that 1-0-10 game. You guys go into another difficult match tomorrow against Team Liquid. You're going to be facing Lorlo up there. How do you feel about the matchup and just overall the game? <laughs> I think it's going to be a pretty easy game for us. <laughs> All right, well, you heard it here from Hauntzer. Final words on that. TSM taking the win over Dignitas. We're going to throw it to the analyst test to break down the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Riv. Strong words out of Hauntzer there leading into tomorrow's matchup against Team Liquid after the 2-1 victory here for TSM. But I do have to say, those last two games there looked so much better out of TSM as opposed to the ones previously played in Week 1. Yeah, the cash just kept hitting it. Even just... The first game of the series, the next two games, looked right. incredibly different. The upper trajectory throughout that series was great. Hanser was talking about they all had a lot to work on after week one. They seem to be making pretty good progress. This definitely wasn't like the perfect series, but they got cleaner and cleaner as the day progressed. Right, and so if we take a look at the team compositions put together, we saw the tank v. tank matchup in the top lane. So yeah. Dignitas opted to go back towards that Maokai for some day. Not quite enough for him this time around because TSM, with all of that focus to the mid lane and getting Bjergsen ahead, just catapulted them to a victory this time around. Yeah, when you get Bjergsen ahead on Cassiopeia in a front versus front team fighting composition where really it's who can kill the tanks first, right. you're going to have a bad time trying to team fight that straight up. And because once that happened, Team Dingatos wasn't able to orchestrate any super creative plays to kind of regain their foothold. Bjergsen's the best in the business there in the mid lane, and the rest of the team was pretty solid. Especially when you consider the fact that pretty early on in the game, we had CS advantages in top, jungle, and bot lane for Dignitas. The only winning lane, in a sense, yep. was Bjergsen in the mid lane. But exactly as you mentioned, it's the it's, it's the exact person on that team that they needed to be ahead in order to eat through that Maokai and the, the high health uh, builders on the side of Team Dignitas. Yeah, and this was the promising thing for TSM as well. When they had those disadvantages in the side lanes, they very quickly moved them around, right? Hanser you could argue, had the disadvantage because he got Bjergsen ahead. And then when the bottom lane was losing, they immediately shoot those guys up to the top lane to get the first turret gold for the team. So they were very proactive in their disadvantage lanes, and right. it's quite successful. And let's go ahead and take a look at the one fight 24 minutes into the game. TSM turning this around off of Dignitas aggression. This yeah. looked like an easy dig win here. Yeah, we were wondering how this went four kills for TSM, but it's because no one could follow through to finish off while Turtle, in part because Laud burned his flash previously, and Hauntzer's TP also blocked 
the rest of them. And it's very difficult to move past the front line when both teams have compositions like this, unless you have Kazakhs, who is one person who can have pretty good backline access. And then King just stuck around too long. And the game was maybe a thousand goal different at that point. And then once that happened, it was over. Right. Look, I mean, that was around the 25 minute mark there. And you can see it on the goal difference over time. That big spike. That was that fight there. Of course, they went and picked up the Baron off the backside of that. Pretty easy to push down the turrets from then on out. Someday unable to match Nautilus in the split push once that Baron buff is there. Yep. So a lot or rather a large influx of gold at that point. And TSM is clearly still capable with Bjergsen at the helm of closing out a game when mm -hmm. ahead, right? It's just yeah. that up to this point, we hadn't seen them in this position too many times. Absolutely. And it is going to be an adjustment period for TSM. Turns out Doublelift was a pretty good shot caller. Some, a skill he developed throughout his career right. for sure, but you can definitely feel his absence. And Hanser talked about it even in that interview. They play much slower. It looks more like 2015 TSM than 2016 TSM, the last time Bjergsen was the primary shot caller. So they still need to find a way to accelerate that pace of game because right. there were a lot of good things that came from TSM being so aggressive last year. I was about to say, whether or not double if shot call, individual calls were good or bad, kind of irrelevant. They were well, there. Yeah, what Hunter was saying is that we had direction yeah. because he was an aggressive person who asked for things to get done. And yeah. if we follow up on it, then it, hey, that's action rather than inaction. So it's paying off for TSM here. When they're able to take action, they're going to have to figure out who is you know whose shoulders that that responsibility is going to land on now yeah. if there is going to be criticism thrown towards any player here in this game i do have to look at wild turtle on the side of tsm missing a lot of various ultimates Ooh. there so mechanically still not necessarily hitting the mark which i feel yeah. against the the very top tier teams and in more and more high pressure situations could definitely bite them he missed a lot of skill shots and he also had a few oopsies throughout the series like the time where he got caught in the bot lane recall shopping and gave a free kill over onto kazakhs i believe that was in game two yep very low percentage as we mentioned on ultimates which are key abilities when they're running pick compositions like that and they didn't have laning phase victories mind no. you they weren't picking themselves into winning situations but uh that is definitely a very clear area for improvement yeah but a player who stepped up in this game was Hanser from the top lane we saw a very early roam down of the mid lane the flash auto on yep. nautilus to get the root absolutely loved what is you know as mechanical a play as nautilus can muster but you know he has found a way to affect the map as a pretty much solely tank player and get Bjergsen ahead as their main carry. Yeah, I think there will be arguments for Hanser in game two on the Poppy as well, but it's kind of just who is able to find the way to get the team the first advantage because those, those are the hardest to come by. Yep. Uh, I, I like the fact that Hanser also was able to step up against Someday after Someday had such a dominating game one. And you could kind of tell that TSM really understood, they, they learned almost how to deal yeah. with him throughout the series, and Hanser made a ton of plays throughout that game. Right, it would be easy to roll over and take your lickings after a loss against a Fiora like that, but he turns it around. TSM picks up the victory with two more matches under our belts. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. FlyQuest is now in Fly sole position. FlyQuest, what are you doing <laughs> up there at the top of the tables? 3-0, but hey, they earned it. Then, with their win, TSM holds on to third place at 2-1, and one, leaving CLG and Team Dignitas tied for seventh place after today's games. But plenty can change as we still have a weekend of games ahead of us. Tomorrow on NALCS1, we have Immortals facing off against Cloud9, with TSM loading back into the Battle Arena to play Team Liquid. That's a big one that uh, Hauntzer and Lorlo matchup will be fun to watch, especially after the commentary in that interview. Then on NALCS2, Envy take on Phoenix1 with Echo Fox versus Team Dignitas later in the day. So we already mentioned this Team Liquid TSM game. How do you expect that to play out, especially with how well Lorlo has been playing so far this split? Exactly, and also you say Team Liquid lost to FlyQuest. Maybe they're a little shaky, but it turns out FlyQuest is playing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, this game will tell us a lot, especially because TSM is starting to play a little cleaner and Team Liquid has some time to pick things up. If it turns into another one of those top lane focused games, uh, so much of it does actually swing on that draft phase. Because right. Because I feel like if TSM is able to manipulate tank versus tank matchups, they're heavily advantaged. So if Lorlo, I feel like, wants to have an edge, they have to find a way to give him a winning lane. Exactly. I mean, Hunter has illustrated today that he can go up against other top tier top laners in someday. Lorlo, who's been performing both on the carries and the tanks, mm -hmm. uh, should be able to be kept under control if Sven Skarin makes his visits up there. The mid lane is where I'm looking. Bjergsen against, say, Golden Glue or Link, mm -hmm. if they decide to bring him in, seems even more lopsided to me than Bjergsen versus Keen. 
Exactly, and I think that's why uh, TSM would have the advantage in the tank matchup because so much of that depends on how good your damage is and how well they can cut through the front line. And right. Bjergsen's Cassiope play has been very good so far this right, Well, week. TSM's got a win under their belt this weekend. They'll be moving in tomorrow with some confidence from all of us here, though, on the live broadcast crew. we got to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you here tomorrow. So have a good night.